Welcome to the RPG Blender, where we give lesser played games or forgotten settings the roll of the dice they deserve. I'm your host, Game Master George, thrilled to welcome you to the next step in our adventure. We've met the first PC, and now it is time to find the next as we travel to a new land of fire and sand. So stick around to meet the second of our new PCs as we step into the world ruined by magic in the RPG Blender's Rejects and Dragons. And now we turn to Greg. Greg, introduce us to your character. My character's name is Eberion. Eberion Sandstrider. I'm a elven nomad wandering the desert wastes of the world that I inhabit. My family, to the best of my knowledge, is dead, having died fighting the revolution, trying to overthrow the mad sorcerer kings that rule each of the city-states. My half-sister was taken from me by the tyrannical government. I wanted to stay and fight, but my family would not allow it. They smuggled me out of the city and told me to wait for them. And wait I did. For a hundred years, I have not returned since. I make my living now serving as hired steel, escorting people across the desert wastes between the great city-states. I tend not to stay in one area for too long, for to do so is to court the sorcerer kings, who use their mad powers to enslave and to cripple people. In my many adventures, I have been searching for some way to reconnect with my family, for some way to bring back what was before the magic was tainted. But alas, all that I can do now is survive. Cool. Nice. Yeah. cool. <laughs> awesome. So, you are from the world of Athos. This is a setting called Dark Sun. Uh, anybody who's played any edition before this probably knows about this. This was a setting that came about in 2nd edition D&D. Uh, very popular then, actually, as far as I'm aware, until they fucked it up with all of the stories. Don't read the books. They're dumb. Okay. Good, I didn't read them. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Capital O opinion. They then brought it back for fourth and kind of fixed it in one of the few thing, good things that came out of fourth edition. Uh, so, yay. Good for that. I'm sort of a bunch of static while you're talking right there. I'm not really sure what happened. <laughs> this is a world which has been destroyed by magic gone awry. In this world, magic is not natural. Psionics are natural. That is what every person is capable of. Magic, on the other hand, is something that destroys the world around it when it's used. These arcane magicians will draw the life force from the creatures, from the plants, from the land itself as they cast their magic and use it to empower it, to work great and terrible magical feats. I could see that if our characters ever meet, we're going to get along swimmingly. Oh, I yeah, could already yeah. just tell. I hate magic. <laughs> I do everything I can to break magic to my will. Oh, boy. <laughs> this... <laughs> <laughs> this rampant defiling destroyed the planet. And in fear, the other worlds locked this planet away. Planar travel is not possible from this plane. You can't, so that the secret of defiling magic would not be able to escape. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. It makes summoning a very dangerous thing. You summon a creature to this plane, and then it cannot return to its own. Well, this is a world sense. where survival is all that matters. It's ruled by the sorcerer kings, who have each carved out a little slice of still habitable land, with their immense power, managing to somewhat protect their citizens although protect is probably a bit of a strong word mm, yeah. as Realize. these citizens are utilized mm -hmm. that is a much better word for it <laughs> recently however there have been word of an uprising in progress rumors that one of the sorcerer kings in tear has actually been dethroned murdered by a slave the rumors are yet unfounded but the word has spread. 
Clom. Yeah. If you are here. Give like Mad Max vibes too. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. 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 So, introduce us to your companions. All right. So, um, uh, my two companions. <clears throat> the first one I have known for some time now. Uh, he is someone I've always come to depend on and rely on. His name is Calvin. Uh, he's a very strange fellow. A dwarf, a tinkerer of arcane types. He uh, is quick-witted. Uh, he's very, very smart. Probably smarter than me, though you won't hear me say that. <clears throat> uh, uh, he is very charming as well. He knows his way around people, something that I myself uh, often struggle with. But uh, he uh, is very self-absorbed. He's trying to carve a way in this world to climb up the social ladder. I myself have no business doing such things, but he seeks uh, to create a name for himself, to create something permanent in this barren world. I think he's a fool, and I think treading in politics is a way to get yourself killed. But uh, he is quite uh, adept at handling himself, and he's lasted so far. Uh, my other companion, her name is Horace. She is uh, my ward. I found her in a bandit camp. She was enslaved there in servitude to the chieftain. I found her in his tent. I broke her chains and set her free. Although I was no fool to try and attack the, ca the captain in his own camp. He is still alive somewhere out there. But uh, she is young and she is my, my ward. I must protect her. I must teach her the ways of the world. Uh, and she is quite the prodigy. She is capable of handling herself and is quite deft and adept at surviving, having lived as she did in the camp encampment. I'm sure she's picked up a couple of tricks of her own. So we have Horus. Horus is a Terran that is PT, who are effectively a... Uh, they are a race that is pretty much unique to uh, Athos. Uh, they are basically wingless pterodactyl people. She is a soul knife rogue, which is a rogue who uses some psionic energy to manifest blades in her hands, blades of psychic energy to assault. It is also capable of manifesting some limited uh, psionic abilities in order to empower her attacks. <laughs> Calvin is an artillerist artificer who uses his uh, tinkering to set up cannons effectively that can release some interesting effects be it a flamethrower bolt of force or just something to heal so who will be playing these characters i think i think this will this will be good yeah i'm a dinosaur <laughs> <laughs> so let's start with these questions shall we who would you like to begin with uh, let's start with Calvin. Okay. Do you have a mostly positive or mostly negative opinion of Calvin? Um, I, I would say my opinion of Calvin is somewhat mixed. Um, okay. he has helped me through many a scrape in my time, and we have worked together for a very long time, and in some ways he is my closest friend. Um, but we disagree on, on many basic ideologies. It's sort of just necessity that has brought us together, and I recognize that, and I'm sure that he recognizes that, um... Uh, it really, were we in a different place in our lives, we would never associate with each other. It's just out of pure necessity. But because of that necessity and because of our many years of of, of experience together, I would say that uh, we are close friends and we share drinks together on occasion. Um, it is just, you know, we're, we come from two different worlds. Um, I'm also much older than him. I'm I'm pretty old. <laughs> uh, and And he... He appears older than me, but he's really the child in our relationship. And he's very headstrong and very um, uh, unaware of the way things are. Yeah. So mostly positive or mostly negative? Oh, it's... <laughs> ah, mostly one. positive. Positive. <laughs> I... right. Roll that d20. Okay. okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, it's good. It's good, man. Eight. Eight. What is your private nickname for this character and why? Uh, peck, peck, peck. <laughs> Pri private nickname. Uh, I call him Firebeard because he has quite a temper and uh, he his face turns all red. It looks like his beard is on fire. And how many times has his beard been on fire? Uh, it also has been on fire on occasion. 
All right, Firebeard. Nice. Roll a d20. Very well. 20. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Waste in the 20s. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! How did this character betray you the last time you confided in them? How did I betray him? Yeah, wow, that's interesting. Well, on one of our journeys into town, we don't do it often, but when we do, uh, it is uh, fortuitous for me. Yes, you do make a lot of money on the, our uh, adventures. Yes. I am more one to help people, and you are more one to profit off of them. Aye, and while in the, the town, uh, I found myself speaking with a... Uh, I'm trying to figure out what the hell accent I'm doing. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm like, I'm like, get... Scottish, Russian. Yeah, Russian. I don't know. I don't You're know. You're finding it. You're learning it. Okay. Uh, you know what? I'll make him Russian. He'll become Russian now. Um, okay. Well, I was in town uh, speaking with a higher than average person, well off individual. I was suggesting things I could bring for them, bring to enhance their life. Uh, one of my recent creations my good friend here overheard and in the most inconvenient time spoke ill of my recent creation speaking not, of one of my malfunctions it was not quite perfect and you know that and you it is not trying, a science you had not tried to mm. and them something <laughs> and 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 discoveries were made yet you you sold me down the river and he turned away. I lost a strong foothold that day. You lost some money, but you made it back on our other adventures. You knew it you is... did wrong. You knew it. And you knew you hurt me, but you did it anyway. Our paths will not always be together. I need you to know this. It is the way of the world. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's do Horus. Horus, so... Mostly positive, mostly negative. Oh, mostly positive, hundred percent positive. No she is, <laughs> she is, uh, she is, uh, she is the, the breath of, she's a breath of fresh air. She is the smell of home to me. Uh, she is perhaps the sister that I never had, although I'm more of a father figure to her. Um, like I said, my sister was taken from me by the government, the sorcerer king, as it became more and more tyrannical, and uh, she is my chance at life again um i want to protect her with all of my being and i want to help teach her how to survive in this world because that is all that matters drop a d20 18 when did you first realize that you loved this character either platonically or romantically oh, yeah, I yeah i have um only platonic love for for horace it's it was probably um when we were eating food together for the first time and it was by the fire late at night when the stars are up in the sky and she snuggled up against my lap from the, the cold desert sands and uh, it just, there was this connection there. I knew that she was important to me and that I would be the one to watch over her. I got a five. What does this character have that you want to take from them? Do you want to look at my items? I think a Baryon is, is, very, is very capable. And he hides himself away in the desert sands when he could do much better things for a lot of people. I want That's to true. take whatever it is that makes him avoid everyone. I want him to take his self-preservation. I want to take his selfishness. I want to take whatever it is that keeps him out here. Because mm. he could be better. Aww. I like that. Yeah. Doesn't sound negative. Roll again! <laughs> <laughs> the moon has risen over the sands of the wastes. It's been a long trek, but you have almost reached the city of Tyr. The darkness surrounds you, but still you press forward running ahead of your companions to scout the land to make sure that nothing unexpected should delay your arrival. If all goes according, you should arrive in two days. Not long, considering how long you've waited for this freedom. As you've come close, you have seen refugees pouring forth 
talking about the uprising, about how the city is in chaos, but they do all state that the Sorcerer King is dead. You can only hope that this is true, that this is not some trick, some ploy to lure you in, to lure in the people who desire to be free, and that this does represent a chance at freedom. As you approach through the night, you see something. On the horizon, it looks like shapes moving, something violent occurring. As you watch, you see the flash of some kind of energy, probably arcane. You hear the scream, and somebody falls. I'm just going to stand here and uh, stay in cover. I'm going to motion to, uh, to Horus and to Calvin that... Uh, there are people up ahead. Uh, I'm going to belly crawl toward you. Okay. I'm going to saunter up slowly. <laughs> Keep yourself down, Calvin. Flashes of magic up ahead. Aye. Must be bandits attacking people, refugees fleeing to the city. <sighs> should help. We should. I, I will make my way around to the front tune. Try to keep yourself low to the ground, which for you should not be too hard. <clears throat> I am offended, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna proceed. Uh, I mean, I'm offended, but I agree. I forgot I'm hot headed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna proceed uh, um, along the dunes, trying to keep low, um, blending okay. in as best as I can. It's still rather dark, correct? Yes. All right. I have dark vision, though, so I can. As you make your way closer, you begin to be able to make out the shapes. It is three standing humanoid figures, but. They look off. Two of them are covered mostly in scales. Some kind of lizard-like being. Not a Terran. Something strange. But beyond that, you can see portions of flesh on the body. Almost like it is some kind of hybrid of a lizard and a humanoid. Ooh. And I've never seen anything like this before in my life. Give me a uh, nature roll. Uh, 14. 14. You have not encountered one of these before, but you have heard tale of the Dre. Strange, draconic creatures. They prey on the people traveling, and they serve the Sorcerer Kings. Mm. Mm. Masterless. Oh, we know that's bad. Yeah. Behind the two with the human flesh, you'd say one that also stands taller, more lithe. It does not have any of the mutations. It looks like a standing lizard man. Mm. Okay, and the person that they attacked, are they completely dead? Where are, are they bleeding out? You can see on the ground, you can't quite make out the state, but it does not look good. It looks like a small shape. On the ground between them. I move forward um, in the shadows as best I can until I'm within striking distance of Same. one of the ones behind. Yeah, and and I and hopefully um, Horace can accompany me. I watch from afar, waiting okay. for what I expect to be yeah. the signal. So I'm assuming you both are doing an attack roll on. Yes. Okay. So who are you targeting? I'm targeting the tall one. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna assist him on the, on the big guy. On the big guy. Okay, I'm gonna need initiatives from everybody so that we can get this in a turn order. Ooh, I got one. <laughs> God, fucking damn it! All right, I got a fucking five. I got a nine. So that's plus four. Wait, five plus four. I got a nine also. Yeah, I got a four. I got a four total. Top of the round is the other guys. Of course. They, don't they do not notice you. Wow. Yes. So what happens? is as you are watching, they do get actions. <laughs> you see the taller one bending over the shape on the ground, uh, searching for something possibly in its flesh. The other two standing guard behind. Well, that'll make it annoying. Uh, so they're flanking it on the back? Mm -hmm. mm. Okay, so I'm going to motion to... A an oopsie daisy? Yeah, we're gonna take up the two guys flanking him first. Oopsie daisy, it is. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna take the one on the left. Is that what we call it um, now? Is and I'm gonna, I'm gonna stab him right in the right in the spine, going okay. for a nice lunging stab. Nice. nice. Here we go. 
What? What? What is what? <laughs> How? <laughs> oh my! He rolled with with two dice. He rolled two fours. <laughs> it was meant to be. I do not understand. That is not enough to uh, pierce the natural armor. As your spear lunges out, it cr- it catches one of the sections of lizard flesh, uh, bouncing off of the scales. Okay. I am going to action surge to attack an additional time. God, <laughs> how? How? <laughs> All right, that's a three. That's a, that also misses. Attack with the haft ends because the sharp end isn't doing anything with my spear, apparently. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whack him with the, <laughs> the thick part. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I hit, which I rolled a four, four, and a three. No, no, no. This is a weak attack. It'll hit. Uh, 11 plus six, so that's a 17. That does hit. You bring the haft around... Uh, Cracking it into the side, into his side, where he does manage to actually feel it. Craig is up next. I'm going to uh, say, in preparation of all this, because it'd be crazy for in six seconds for me to be able to do this. I'm going to build a uh, quick little catapult device, and I'm going to uh, launch it. Roll it. All right. Uh, do it, Calvin. Fifteen. As you launch it. It moves out of the way. So it's been made kind of uh, aware that it is being attacked. So it manages to dodge. Uh, Next is Rich. All right, Pterodactyl Girl, do something, please. Uh, I'm going to activate my soul knife. So you, as you watch, blades of gleaming energy erupt from her hands as she goes in for the stab. Nice. Stab time. Nice. That's a good roll. All right. So that's 21 total to hit. Cool, and you get your sneak attack damage. Nice. 2d6. All right. Wow, oh, 19 baby. damage. 19 damage. Awesome. The one that you attack collapses to the ground. Top of the order. So the other one that has not uh, move, has not been attacked yet turns, sees you, and lunges at you with a bite with its lizard jaws. I'm going to use my reaction to attack him uh, okay. as he goes after her. Okay. Um, with my spear. <laughs> you do not attack her! Go, man, go. Yeah, that's a 16. Ooh, that's good. Nice. Yes. All right, and that's a d6 for the spear. I assume. Which is four plus, uh, four plus two, so that's ten damage. As you stab him, since he has not attacked yet, he changes his focus. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. No, I'm, I'm cool. Yep. Uh, and he goes for the bite on you. Oh, okay. As his jaw opens, you can see very sharp fangs sharper than they should be as they lunge out and sink into your flesh <laughs> for only eight damage okay all right okay at which point the other one rises oh God. turns raises a clawed hand and an eldritch blast fires oh. at both of you oh all right <laughs> what did you what did you say your ac was 17 all right he misses you yes Ah, uh, he rolls a base 19 against you, however. Oh, and it's zero. Well, that is 10 force damage. I, I put on a tough face. I block I block it from hitting my like body with my arms, and my Aww. forearms are scorched. <laughs> Next up. All right. Um, I am going to uh, finish off the guy who was lunging to bite me, I guess, because I'm still engaged with him. So I'm going to give him a nice little stab, a little stabby stab right in the stomach. And that's a nat one. <laughs> Roll it again. Oh, no. Roll it again. Let's see if you fumble or just uh Don't kill your ward. Thirteen plus the two proficiency and the four from Dex. So that's a nineteen. Okay. So I don't okay. fumble. So you do not fumble. You do miss, but you do not fumble. Thank God. Um I'm gonna bonus action attack with the the butt end. Yep. Oh my <laughs> It's another one! <laughs> don't understand! Hey! <laughs> this guy's a hero! <laughs> you want the blood die? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Next roll is an eighteen plus six. Okay, so we're fine for okay. the fumble. Dude. Why can I roll the eighteen? The so, smash that dice with a hammer. You bring the spear up to the side. It, it catches into one of his uh, scales in between. You think for a moment that the shaft might actually snap. However, you do manage to retract it and come around for the other blow, which he deflects with his hand. Yep. Um, I am going to disengage from him, and I'm going to, uh, run towards the mage guy. 
Okay. So if he wants the opportunity to attack me, he can. He will. <laughs> oh, oh, he does. <laughs> he will use that reaction. Uh, he will miss. Yay! Yay! All right, I'm not gonna get directly engaged though. I'm gonna leave space in case yeah. he wants to come to me. Okay. Craig, I'm going to build a force ballista. Go for it. I build it. You build it. It has Yay! been built. And I will uh, use your bonus action. Use my make bonus a range action. spell attack roll on whoever your target is. I will target um, uh, underling who was attacking friend. Underling who was attacking. Nice. Nice roll, Calvin. Da. It is all right. Twenty-three. That hits, and your damage is incoming. <laughs> uh, Twelve damage. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna finish blocking him. Um, I'm actually gonna bite him. I'm pretty mad right now. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Nice little feral kid activity. I like it. I yeah, like and he's it. not turned toward me, so I'm going to use the opportunity to kind of like jump up and try and like get him right on the neck. Nice. Okay. Oh, how are our rolls Roll this the three. Bad? We're so good. <laughs> I, give him, ha- I give him a little nuzzle. I give him a little single. lizard nuzzle and I say, hey, bro, why are you doing this? Okay. <laughs> Make him uncomfortable. The violence isn't the, the answer. Choices. No longer platonic. <laughs> Every D&D game I've ever run for you guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. This doesn't bode well. Hey, we did really well. This is why I picked a fighter, because I was like, I want to have as many attacks as possible, because I know I'm going to miss a lot of them. So I increase the odds that I hit at least This is why I don't fight in Georgia's campaigns. (laughs) (laughs) Just role play. (laughs) Okay, anyway, uh, that's it. Are you going to do an off... uh, Wait, no, uh, yeah, you could do an offhand. Uh, That is 18. That hits. Yes. Hooray. Four. Four? That's just one. You rolled a one. It's a one. Oh, I thought the psychic gives me that, but that's for my dex. My apologies. I don't understand how the edition works yet. The blade sinks in. That was enough to kill him. You see a little sizzle around where it goes in, almost as if his uh, mental energy has begun to burn away, but it does not finish him. He then goes. He sees the blade stuck in his side and brings his jaws down to try to bite you. He... What's your AC? Is 17. Is that included in your 16 AC? Maybe. It doesn't matter. 16 still misses. Nice. Hooray. Okay. Uh, Then the warlock goes, launches out. Two more. So against you, misses. And against Horus. Son of a bitch. 16. Do it. Do it. Only five force damage. All right, I'm atta- I'm gonna I'm gonna run up and attack him with my spear now. Which one, the the warlock? The warlock guy, gotcha. yeah, the guy who's Over eldritch it. blasting. That dude. twelve plus six, that's an eighteen. Yay! Not a one. A solid right. hit. <laughs> All right, spear is six plus my six. That's eight damage. Eight damage. Cool. And I'm gonna do a bonus action. Whack him with the butt end. That's an eight. Oh my god! <laughs> eight plus six is fourteen. Is fourteen hit? Didn't think so. Yeah. All right. That's Sorry. my turn. Agony. <laughs> yeah, we're aware we're fighting naked people. What yeah. about it? We we're aware that we're people. struggling. All right. Look, it was a long journey to the city right. of Tier. Your turn. We are very tired from our travel. It is nighttime. Incoming. Another force ballista shot. Uh, here we go. Roll the eight. That's a thirteen. And I will. Um, and just trying to scrape any kind of damage at this point. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna pull out my light crossbow. Nice, nice. And try and just... <laughs> just <laughs> try and shoot, shoot that cool. guy who's pretty much um, just just wheezing. <laughs> just wheezing in place. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Rolled an 18. So, hey! So that will be an 18 to hit. Hits. Roll your damage. Don't kill him, one. kill him, kill him. Don't get Don't a one. Kill one. Cool. Three! Three. Three. Three times a one! The bolt catches him in the side of the fleshy neck. And he drops to the ground. All right, Rich. You're welcome. So now it's just the warlock guy. Mm-hmm. I screech and lunge at him. Nice. Yeah. All right. Go for the throat, Horace. Yeah. It's the world of 18s now. It is. So base 18 plus. Yeah. All right, all right cool. Uh, I deal three damage to him. Uh, you get your sneak attack because he is adjacent. Oh, nice. Okay. You can get your sneak attack once per turn, not per round, per nice. turn. Oh, nice. I mean, it doesn't have the plus next to it, so I don't know if it gets plus. I don't know if natural weapons are considered light, so I get to have my You probably... He well, are you biting or are you stabbing? Biting. Ah. Uh, so trying to get HP. Uh, you get your strength. Two. Yeah. So... Nothing. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah. So, but I gained three HP. So that's pretty sweet. That's yeah. big. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's good. Okay. So uh, you dealt nine damage. I did. I dealt a total of nine damage to him. Okay. Bite him right in his kidney. Cool. He goes. He is really, really angry and gonna fight, do the same thing that he's done before. Well, that makes this sense. Dick. Yeah, because it's been working. But he's doing both at you. For a little little nibble? Yep. And that is, well. Yeah, you shouldn't have eaten his that, flesh. Uh, you that weird. Hits. Yes, you did just eat his flesh. You weird little pterodactyl girl. Barely... Honor that you're supporting this. This Only is one rewards, hits. man. It was barely yeah, even that's... good. She's a cannibal. You know this one hits for damage. seven damage. I believe she is seven monster. Seven force damage. <laughs> Rich. How much damage? Seven. Ooh. Oh, bitch. It's my turn next. I'm it's stabbing. I'm stabbing. Go for it. He hits stabbing. me right in the gut and I vomit <laughs> up a little bit of blood. I'm vomiting up a little bit of blood. Just watch my hero. I do, Just I, watch my hero is going to save me. There goes my hero. Right, I rolled a two. I'm going to use the bonus action for that, that butt attack. Watch him as he goes. That's a four. <laughs> da -da 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 I rolled a lot of twos and fours. I hope you did. I think you need a different die. <laughs> dice has I to hope, get thrown I'm out. Not, I'm not going to lie to you. I hope that I die and I get my wish and it drives you to be something more. Oh, no. my God. No, no this is our first session. Together. I know. That's why it's great. No, would, you you like a, would you like one <laughs> of the DM dice? <laughs> I Dark DM dice. So On uh, my next turn, yes. That was okay. one of my actions. I'm done. I hope she's still alive. All right. God, <laughs> Jesus Christ. My Go turn? For it. Yep. Incoming! Force Ballista. Go for it. Help? Mm -hmm. oh. You're actually gonna die then if he, if he attacks you. Again. Nope, 13. You don't know that for sure. Calm down. Uh, so I will. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'll uh, I'll use the catapult. I, uh, I'm i gonna load it up and fire another wad of rock at him. Cool. Please! Alright, 16. All right, uh, so yeah. that's a 21. Cool. And that's gonna be 5 damage. Cool. The rock hits him in the side of the head. Unfortunately, it wasn't a very solid rock. It was mostly uh, like loose dirt. dirt. Yep. Yeah, like mostly a dirt, dirt clod. clod. It still hurts him, but it doesn't Bonk. kill him. Good old dirt clod fight. As the poor bleeding out Horus Terran. I look to you and I give you a bloody wink and I just stab him again. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna hit. That's gonna hit. So 17. Stop spinning. Is that a six? Oh. It was almost a six, but instead it was a nice round 14 damage. Awesome. You drive the first blade into him. It hits his central nervous system. The uh, arc, the psychic energy burns through his spinal cord up into his brain and fries, and he falls. I got an extra <sighs> 20, so I'm going to stab him in the head with my offhand, too. Cause... Yes, you stab the dead body in its head. Thanks. Yeah. Feels good. <sighs> Is everyone all right? I point to the body. <laughs> to, to the body of the person we were trying to The I'm all right. It felt pretty good, actually. I say as I trot over. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out some of my uh, water from my water skin. And I'm gonna... I literally take your hand and I point to the body. It is. It's a strange sight. It's a halfling. It's a dead halfling, wearing nice clothes, well dressed. It There's is not teeth wild. No. Well, that is just weird. This is this is strange. It doesn't look like the barbarians that you're used to. This looks almost like a member of normal society, well, but it is a halfling. While you're looking at this, I'm going to go over to uh, Horus and go, come here, lass. I got you, and I'm going to start cobbling together some healing for you. I do. I do touch your touch your forearm. You're okay. Mm, I'm fine. Okay. Say. <laughs> this is a, <laughs> this is sad to see a halfling not corroded by the wilds. Um, I'm gonna turn their body over and I'm gonna kind of search them, see if they have anything Do in you their mean possession. Investigation. Fourteen. Yeah, yeah, right. Oddity upon oddity. It has a book on it. Well, I'm gonna look at that book. Can I read it? I actually do speak halfling. Uh, you can understand the words. It'll take you a little while to read it. It'll probably it take a long rest reading it, and you'll be able to know what's going on but it looks like it's a journal of some kind hmm. what did you find hey, some kind of journal must be from this person whatever they are uh, they look like a merchant to you do they not mm. or some or some someone from an upper class definitely not the kind of halflings i've ever had run-ins with yes. they must be from the city we're only a day or two away i think we should make uh, a good effort to get there as soon as possible in your youth did you ever see a halfling like this in the cities no no, I suggest that we make camp a little ways away from here. We don't know how many more of them are lurking about. The very <laughs> masterless. Probably not. Hopefully not. Right now. Okay. <sighs> you make your way away. You set up camp for the... I'm going to bury the body. Okay. You bury the halfling. And I help. 
and you make your way away. You set up camp for the evening day because you don't want to travel. Right, don't want to travel during the sun. Yeah, during the sun. Okay. You set up your camp. Take a long rest. All right. Uh, Give me an investigation roll to see what you get out of this book. That's a 10 plus 1. 11. be really exciting for a second. The journal... It's a little rambling, uh, and it's in a dialect of halfling that you are not used to. After all, they don't really write very often. They do, their written language is very primitive, but this this has much more um, nuance to it. It's much more refined. It speaks of... Is there a name, too, for this? There is no name in it, uh, but it speaks of a land of blue. Uh, something called the Life Shapers and the Coming of the Green. And it mentions this thing called the Pristine Tower, which is supposed to be some place of great power with the potential to shape the Earth. And it gives you a location. Oh. In the mountains to the north. Is this past Tyr or is it in the opposite direction of Tyr? Uh, to get to Tyr, you would keep traveling west. Uh, this would be a northern path, so it's not going to take you away from it, but it's not going to take you directly to Tyr. So this would be a little bit of a, of a detour. Well, definitely can't go there. Back to the city. I do want to see the city first, I think, and it's also a good place to stock up on provisions because I only have like a day or two rations left, I would imagine. In the morning, uh, I wake everyone up. Um, I collect some some game, like shoot down like a bird or something, and I I, I cook up some 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 food for them, mm. and over um, the steaming smell of cooking meat. Mm. What are you uh, smelling so good? It is your dinner, Calvin. But they just woke up. I think that would be breakfast. <laughs> you are a fool. <laughs> and I pull off a wing and I eat it. <laughs> start eating them. the wing. Ah uh, yes. Well, Thank you, my friend. I was reading the uh, the journal that we found on that well dressed What did you find? It appears to be uh, a much more intelligent halfling than I had ever given them credit to be. They are not intelligent. I think you're misguided. No, uh, this is definitely in the tongue of the halfling, but it is discussing the coming of the green and the land of the blue. It speaks in riddles and prophecies, but it tells of the mountains to the north may contain the answers of this. I don't know if I want to go there, but I don't wait. Wish. Don't you always talk about yes, plants or something? It is my hope that one day plant life will return to this world. Could this be talking about greenery? Like Horus is thinking? I think the last might be onto something. You may be right. I think this is worth checking out if you would be so interested. I'm sure there's money to be made in the return of plants life. What else am I going to do? Say no? Very well. What do you think we should do first? Should we visit the city? Well, I think the city has been there and will be there. Whatever this is, is unknown. Duh. If this is true green... It could help a lot of people or make you money. We will eat like kings if it is true green. Well, hopefully not eat like sorcerer kings. Very well. We shall go. To the north. Towards the mountains. You head to the north, off of the beaten path, into the sands. To the north, heading to the mountains. Eventually, following the guide provided in the journal, you make your way to a mountain pass. You take the road up. It is untraveled. Horus, there's something strange. As you look around, um, you begin to catch sight of some creatures. They're not the standard creatures from this area. Uh, it's not the normal birds. It's not the normal... And there are birds. There Normally are animals birds. are pretty well hidden yes. during the day, especially. These, I point this out. Yes, these have oddities to them. They're not what you're familiar with. These are strange. This place is strange. What? The animals? They're wrong. They're colorful. They're not dull colored. They are out during the day. Mm-hmm. Something is wrong. That is with these animals. Very strange. They are... You press forward... Yeah, I'm going to see if I can get a closer look. Is Maybe it... this is where that creature came from, the halfling. It is possible. Uh, let me see if I can get down one of those birds. I'm going to try and shoot down a bird. Uh, you managed to shoot one of the birds. It falls down. Okay, uh, the bird. It hits the ground. You can see where its wound was. Something begins to change. And the wound itself begins to grow and new flesh to erupt from it. Before long, it resumes its flight with a new appendage. 
something strange growing from it. What? <laughs> Wait, it, did the arrow, like, it, it, the flesh, like, went around the arrowhead? Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So it just healed itself. Was it dead? Did it? It looked dead. It looked dead. Arcana check? Sure. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need Arcana to know. Something's fucking right. weird. Uh, that animal was definitely dead. And it is not now. This can mean one thing and one thing only. There is restorative energies here. Energies beyond our kin. Our kin. Energies and magic that can bring back the dead. That is very powerful if it is bringing people back to the dead. Even if it is bird. We must find the source of this. Press onwards. Very well. You press forward. You continue up the pass, and before long, you see not a building, but a tall spire of white stone. It spirals into the sky, and you can feel, all of you, an energy pulsing from it. Something unnatural, and something dark. I believe we have found destination. At which point, the tower itself seems almost to glow. And then the world dissolves into white. (laughs) Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to our show. New episodes will be coming every first and third Monday of the month, but stick around to meet the next new character. If you liked our show, please like, comment, subscribe, but most important, keep listening. We've just launched a new series on running the game of Paranoia here on YouTube, so go check it out. If you want to stay up to date on our releases, you can also find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at RPG Blender. If you'd like to support us as we try to improve our offerings, we have a tip jar and Patreon. Links in the description. Music is The Punk Rock Show by My Free Mickey. Copyright 2012. Licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution License. Thank you again, and remember, there's gaming outside the Forgotten Realms. <laughs> <laughs>